Environmental activists have ridiculed the UN Climate Change Conference in Bali, calling it watered down and environmental columnist George Mombia calls it worse than Kyoto. The primary criticism of the conference is that no binding targets were included in the final agreement, even though the EU lobbied for reductions of 25 to 40 percent by 2020. I'm joined in the studio by ecological economist Peter Victor from York University in Toronto. So Peter, your take on Bali, was something concrete uh, achieved or was it more hot air? Something was achieved, uh, to my mind not enough. The parties agreed to uh, how they're going to continue to talk to one another over the next two years um, with the intention of having something in place when the Kyoto Protocol expires in 2012. The problem is that um, although the agreement has a lot of uh, positive sounding language, uh, there, there's no commitment at this point to the level of reductions that they're going to negotiate uh, after Kyoto expires. I mean, there seems to be straightforward opposition to binding targets from the United States, really in Canada, the kicking and screaming kind of agreed to some side, side agreement with the Kyoto countries to agree to a target, but boy, Canada didn't want to. Um, is this really achievable, the kind of uh, t uh, reduction that's necessary to stop the worst consequences of climate change crisis without very, very serious binding targets with real teeth? Well, no. In the end, we have to have binding targets. Uh, we've got to get very, very significant reductions in greenhouse gas emissions uh, globally. I think that's very clear from the latest report of the um, International Panel on Climate Change. So, and that was one of the positive things that perhaps came out of Bali was uh, um, the countries agreed to accept the IPCC's latest report as the, the state of science. So that was good. But no, uh, it's pretty clear we do need um, binding targets. And then the other problem is you, you, a country agrees to binding targets, and then goes home, you know, you agree at the conference, go home and do nothing, go home and pass regulation that it, on the face of it is supposed to get you to the binding target, but in fact never does. Um, so why don't we get into the real substance of if we're going to hit the targets that are necessary to hit, that scientists are telling us by 2050, I think the scientists want an 80% reduction based on 1990 levels. Do I have my Something like that. numbers right? And, and, and the IPCC even talked about a potential increase, temperature increase as much as six degrees um, if nothing is done, uh, and which everyone is predicting rather apocalyptic consequences if we hit six degrees. So what, what are the policy options that are possible and, and what's your take on them? Okay, first of all, we have to recognize that what we're dealing with here is a global problem. Um, having said that, we, are very, we have very weak global institutions, um, not just in the environment, but specifically with respect to the environment. So we're in the middle of a real struggle here. We're trying to deal with a global environmental problem relying on nation states, which you know, 500 years, 600 years old is an idea, and it's a, it's a very bad match. And that's why I think that the negotiators are having such difficulty um, making the kind of progress that we'll need to make to solve this problem. S what this means then is that whatever approach the countries come up with end up coming back to the individual countries um, having to do their share, whatever that is and whatever they've agreed to.